Over 800 million Chinese people have been lifted out of poverty in the past four decades, and the goal is to eradicate poverty within China by 2020. With three years to go, can China achieve that goal, and can China's experience work in other parts of the world? You're watching The Point. I'm Li Xin. After years of hard work, China is closing in on its goal of building what we call a moderately prosperous society in all aspects by 2020, with a baseline task of lifting all people out of poverty. As of the end of last year, there were still 43.4 million people, about 3% of the population, living below China's poverty line of 2,300 renminbi yuan, or roughly 340 US dollars per year. Now, now, with three years to go, will the goal be met? What has to be done? As China's achievements in poverty reduction are being recognized internationally, how can such experiences be helpful to other countries and regions in the world? Joining me for the discussion today in the studio are Mr. Mo Ji Hong, Deputy Secretary of the Municipal Committee of the Chinese Communist Party of Zhang Ye in northwest China's Gansu province, Professor Xia Qing Jie from the School of Economics at Peking University, and Michele Gerachi, head of the China program at the Global Policy Institute. Institute. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Mr. Moore, now Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping bring out the idea of uh, so-called targeted poverty reduction about exactly three years ago when he visited a, a village in central China's Hunan province. Now, three years on, do we have a better, a clearer idea what exactly this strategy is in practice? Yeah, I think uh, because uh, the uh, in the Xi Jinping's report to the 19th CPC National Congress, and uh, the China entered into a new era. Uh, in this uh, new era, and uh, the social uh, principle uh, contradiction has been changed, and now we can find the social the man contradiction just uh, yeah uh, is described as uh, uh, the contradiction between unbalanced uh, and uh, inadequate. Uh, uh, development and uh, the people's uh, ever going needs for a better life. So, how can we protect the people can get the better life? So, we can find uh, the um, 1978 and uh, China began to take the open and uh, the reform policy, and uh, we, our Chinese government, uh, had uh, did more uh, in developing the rural area. And uh, we try to reduct the poverty in the rural area, especially maybe in the uh, urban area. Also, we have same problem. So I think, uh, how can we and uh, just uh, uh, put the, uh, all the people together, and uh, we can get uh, the mm -hmm. better life? So this is a common issue. So we have to resolve the poverty problem in the rural area. So that's the reason why, and uh, we want to implement uh, the target. Uh, and the poverty elevation policy. Yeah, Professor Xia, what are we targeting? Uh, we're targeting by the income poverty or by the consumption poverty and those people who lived under the poverty line. And I think China has uh, made a tremendous progress on this uh, line. And because it, at the very beginning of the economic reform, 76 people uh, 76 percent of rural people, uh, 55 percent of urban people live under the poverty line. Mm. But right now, perhaps less than uh, 4 percent of people, rural people, uh, live under the poverty line. So I, I have been always asking myself why China has made such a tremendous progress. Uh, I think finally I find out that it was because China has a, has a very successful industrialization. Without industrialization, anything wouldn't be talked about. Mm -hmm. But at this particular stage, when we talk about targeted poverty relief, what are we talking about? W what is being targeted? Uh, they generally say there is a, a six targeting. Targeting exactly who uh, live under the poverty line. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, targeting the leaders who are going to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Targeting the method to solve this problem and targeting the 
places that suffered its problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically it's precision guided poverty reduction approach. Michele, um, why do you think we have to ap adopt this approach now in China? Yeah, because the last mile is always the most difficult uh, goal to obtain. Uh, it was, uh, first of all, China achievement has been remarkable in the history of mankind and uh, all the Western world is in awe to look at what China has done. Uh, however, it, we also should say that it was relatively easy at the beginning when uh, we had 75% uh, uh, you know, uh, in the rural area poor and half mm -hmm. of the group in the urban area poor with an income per capita of 300 renminbi in the urban area and 130 renminbi in the rural area per year, mm -hmm. it was easy to do anything. And uh, it's like uh, who was making money in the 80s in China? Anyone who would export anything. Uh, and so there was no need for targeting. Uh, now, when we have a population which is still below poverty line of, uh, some people say 5%, some people say 10%, depending on if we use the $1 per day, which is the official Chinese government yes. uh, of $340 per year, yeah. or the World Bank 1.9 US dollar per day, which would bring uh, maybe to uh, 80 million uh, roughly. But, you know, that doesn't really matter. The, the point is that now we need to target it because, like you just said, we cannot just do an umbrella approach. We need to know who these 43 million people are, mm -hmm. where do they live, who runs the business, the family, and uh, what are the places? Because China geography is also in a way that uh, most of these people live in uh, regions that are not easily reachable. Sure, sure. Now, uh, Zhang Ye is in northwest China's Gansu province. Northwest China or western China in, in general lags behind the development of the coastal regions. You have been the uh, uh, deputy secretary of the Zhang Ye uh, Municipal Party Committee. What has been the experience in that city in terms? terms of poverty alleviation. Yeah, and uh, because I'm a deputy sector general, so also I have some uh, deep in, uh, impression on the... How poor is that area, is that city? Yeah, the, I know your meaning is that poor and the poverty is very difficult to define <coughs> because now uh, at the different level we have different standards. Mm, just like the Gansu province last year, and uh, we take uh, the income just uh, below 3,500 yuan. Mm -hmm. Maybe this uh, uh, family mm -hmm. uh, just the uh, income uh, below the 3,500 yuan. Uh, yeah, yeah, but this year uh, yeah. we're changing the standard. Yeah. Uh, we just improve the standard mm -hmm. to the 3,700 mm -hmm. yuan. So it's very difficult to define mm -hmm. but what's what the meaning the of the poverty. Yeah. But what's the rough percentage of the local population that are living under the line you were mentioning? Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, <coughs> I'm not quite sure uh, what's the exact statistics about the Gansu province, mm -hmm. but I can understand uh, the Zhang Ye situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning of this year, and the Jiangye government declared, and uh, all the county, all the county, we have the six counties, mm -hmm. and uh, we just uh, all the county get uh, the poverty, uh, get out of poverty. But we still have the by poverty. the end of this year. Uh, no, or? at the beginning of this year. At the beginning of this uh, year. But we still have the poverty household, and just uh, below the three percent of the population. Just under yeah, just, uh, so now mm -hmm. and, uh, we take the special measure to help uh, and, uh, such the people just uh, below the three percent of the population. Mm -hmm. So now and uh, we uh, personally I think uh, we have uh, three kinds of experience. Firstly, uh, because you know uh, uh, every day uh, we say the Chinese characteristic. What's the meaning Chinese characteristic? Because now in China the Communist Party and. Uh, just uh, yeah, just uh, we the communist party that lead all the work. Yes. Uh, in the country, so first Before of you move on to your second point, I want to really ask for, uh, the two of you: How important is the ability, or the, the the depth and the reach of the Chinese party organization on the grassroots level, important in China's poverty alleviation work, Professor Xia? Uh, I think the uh, Chinese Communist Party is completely different from the Western uh, Parliamentary Party. They are fighting for the general election to get the power. But in China, China uh, the parties uh, com uh, have a much more stronger position, uh, have uh, any all means in China to get rid of the power to any kind of uh, things. And. Uh, also, I think China is different from other developing countries. China has a long history. 
in my view that the Chinese basic political structures, basic governing uh, governance structures has never changed since the Qin Dynasty, since Qin Shi Huang. We Which means a very strong central government? Yes, has always been like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that uh, kind of trend has been strengthening. Has been strengthening. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and also, maybe uh, very contradicting with what Western people have argued that uh, this kind of government is uh, exclusive. But in, in terms of China, very inclusive. Because in every dynasty, all the elite was recruited to the central government by the Kirju, the national exam system for the uh, government officials. So it becomes very uh, efficient in the governing, uh, in the governing structure. I see, I see your point. Mm. Michele, um, is, that, is that what we're talking about, the, the importance of the ability to implement the central policies uh, at the grassroots level? There, 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 is, there is an element of truth because in emerging market, when uh, you, do not need to, you don't have time to debate too much, a strong government, whether it's central or local government, that uh, implements uh, what they say is, is key. Mm -hmm. And it is correct that if we start debating too much on who should do it, then things don't get done. So one of the key successes of China has been the control and the cascading down of the policy from central government to provincial, prefecture and city level, and then village, town and so on. That has actually made the things because we know the the system in China is very nicely uh, arranged so the, the directive comes from above and then people uh, it's like a cascading up and up the directive goes from top to down and promotion goes from bottom up if the if the, uh, the, the deadline and the objectives are met and so there is a total alignment of interest mm -hmm. and so now there's 43 million people working under uh, not just Zheng He and other places will you know every village chief every county official knows that his promotion and his advancement will depend not just on GDP growth, uh, not just on the environment, uh, but you know, the pie of the promotion will be bigger in the poverty reduction yeah. or elimination for that 3% of his own uh, county. And that works very well. And also to, which means to in, in, uh, incentivize um, governments at all levels to put their resources Absolutely. into this, uh, this uh, practice. Uh, you have been watching the point with me, Lucien. We have been talking about China's targeted poverty reduction policy, and we'll be back right after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back, and we continue our discussion on the targeted poverty reduction strategy in China. Mr. Moore, I interrupted you. What is the second point now here? Yeah, just now I said in China, the Chinese Communist Party play a very important role in the field of uh, uh, just a target uh, poverty elevation. So here, I just, just now you ask me what's the meaning of the target. So it's very complicated to define because mm. there are two ways. First of all, and maybe you ask me what's the meaning of the target uh, poverty family, or what's the meaning of the target poverty household. Yeah, this is a very special group of the uh, people. And uh, secondly, uh, what's the meaning of the uh, target uh, uh, poverty elevation policy? Yeah, it's uh, different. Uh, just uh, the, the, the later the target uh, uh, poverty elevation, that's the meaning and uh, uh, how many measures uh, can be taken by the government, uh, yeah, and uh, maybe first of all, and uh, make the target uh, policy, and then just uh, take the target uh, the measure. So I can explain in the Changye, how can we do? Yes. So China Communist Party, first of all, make a very comprehensive uh, policy. We just take uh, the um, uh, poverty relief elevation as a social engineer. So first of all, we ask uh, the, all the cat the leader at different level, and uh, we share the contact with uh, some special family, even for me. Uh, I have two villagers. Mm -hmm. I should, uh, uh, every month I should visit them and uh, just uh, ask them their problem and uh, find uh, the new situation. This is the first uh, uh, point. I think it's very successful. Uh, is, it just the, is it just the party or government officials that are signing? Yeah, 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 yeah just uh, not the ordinary uh, citizens. Um, not ordinary citizens, just the uh, public servicemen. So you'll service be held man. personally responsible if if they're not yeah, living yeah, out yeah, of yeah, poverty. Yeah. I, I should uh, every month I should visit them mm. to find some situation. Mm -hmm. What has happened? Uh, what uh, uh, can I help with them? So this is the first experience. Secondly, how can we find the target? Poverty family, household. Mm. So, and uh, in Changye, and uh, the, our government take a very special policy, and we just dispatch the young cat 
And uh, many, many young people, uh, just uh, they live in the villager. So they work with the villager and uh, every day and uh, they discuss and uh, they live together and uh, they can find uh, uh, which family is the poorest, really poorest. Mm. And uh, then we can get uh, the exact uh, statistics about the uh, target uh, yeah. uh, poverty family. So here is the second way. Thirdly, and, uh, we try to find a special program to help the target poverty family. Maybe we just uh, establish the rural uh, cooperative, you mm. know, maybe the several family and uh, they just put their land together, maybe they use the land and uh, just plant the vegetable and the sale, so they get the money, they can have some of the mutual help, so this is a very good experience for us. And yeah. does it work? Uh, it works very well. Work very well. Oh, work very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Professor Xia, um, it's it's really quite interesting, right? The 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 way to survey the people, to find out the people, and then the way to uh, link government officials or party officials with impoverished family. Is that specifically a Chinese thing, or have you seen this kind of thing when you were studying abroad? Uh, no, I think I don't. Uh, I, uh, this kind of exactly targeting. I think it's only be implemented by Chinese governments because uh, when the central government said the local governments and the local even the uh, village leaders can must implement it, carry out these measures. Mm. But in terms of United States or other European countries, the central government cannot control the local governments because local governments also elected. They, they are just uh, work in their own ways. Not they are might not listen to the central governments. So uh, the, there's a yeah, what could be some of the potential risks of having this, you know, cascade uh, one direction? It's an order, you have to do it. Is there any risk in there? I mean, if you make a mistake in the policy, maybe, you know, you, you can't correct it very easily. Yeah, and uh, sometimes I can find some problem because... For uh, instance? Yeah, uh, for instance, and, uh, some uh, the rural uh, resident, uh, yeah, they just like... Uh, the government uh, just uh, offer the many many things to them, mm -hmm. so they like to become a poverty uh, family, because if they yeah if they, they are, are poverty, yeah, family, they, they can get the much support from the government. I see. So it's a big problem. Yeah. I so think. what are what are some of the, the the mechanisms or policies to to solve these problems? Yeah, and then now and uh, just at the very beginning of. Uh, uh, the taking the policy of uh, the target um, uh, poverty elevation, maybe the government also uh, at, the, at the high level uh, just to give the money, just uh, without any uh, without any activity, just to give you the money. Mm -hmm. And finally, we find yeah. such uh, the policy uh, maybe just uh, uh, waste uh, much more the public uh, resource. So uh, now uh, we just uh, uh, changing uh, the financial policy, mm. and we can give their uh, microfinance, yeah, just the finance, and uh, just help them. Maybe they can establish some uh, 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 the plants, uh, some of the farmer, and if they need the money, we give them money. But they should return. Mm. Yeah. So this is a way can control. And uh, that people, uh, they just uh, ask the money from the government. They were so they're, they're encouraged anything. to to work. I encourage uh, the poor family uh, to work very hard, yeah. and yeah. then they can get uh, out of the poverty really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michele, uh, what is your thoughts? Yeah, on but no, I, I, I agree. I actually worked on the microcredit uh, programs in uh, Sichuan, mm -hmm. near uh, in the north of Chengdu, mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, and there was a famous rule number 23. Mm -hmm of the government that basically set up this microcredit institution a little bit in 2008, so 10 years ago, to uh, actually even then uh, target uh, just to avoid uh, this uh, uh, you know, uh, unbalanced development that anyone could claim to be poor. With microcredit there was a little bit of analysis of who were the really recipients of these funds. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not aid, it was a loan mm -hmm. uh, and so it was almost uh, like an investment that each of these village banks and microcredit institution was uh, granting. After analyzing, and actually we did go around to uh, analyze the potential of the farmers that if they, for example, were 
changing the crops that they were growing from mm -hmm. rice to flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, the income goes up by five times, so, or peppers, uh, you know, two renminbi versus ten renminbi per, per uh, pound. And so that was a little bit of a business plan. And so there was also an incentive on behalf uh, of these farmers not to just passively get the money, yeah. but to a little bit to work to earn it. Uh, yeah. And that did help a, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and indeed, it has helped. Uh, you know, in India and Bangladesh, because we have the, the, the examples of Grameen banks uh, as a tools, and in Latin America, and so China has implemented this, and I think this is a very good way to, to, to solve the uh, agency problem. Mm -hmm. What about uh, the the issue of sustainability in poverty reduction? I also mean, uh, maybe some people are helped out of poverty, but what is the possibility that they slip back into poverty? What measures the, does the Chinese policy have to prevent that from happening? Because President Xi Jinping also talked about Jin Tuoping, right? Mm. That means you're not just uh, on paper for or real. in numbers uh, yeah. being out of poverty, but for real, you are out of poverty and once for all. Yeah. Professor Xia. Yeah. Uh, for those uh, very vulnerable people and uh, just uh, live around the poverty line, and they very likely to fall in the poverty uh, trap again. So in the future, I think China will uh, carry out some very different policy after the 2020. Uh, one policy is, um, uh, for example, the agriculture insurance. If the, uh, the because the agriculture activity and the animal husbandry, they are very uh, uncertain, um, uh, affected by the weather, by the, by the, uh, the disease. So if we, uh, the government can give the rural people who uh, engage in this uh, agriculture or the animal production ac activities, give them official um, subsidies to the uh, insurance company, if their business fail, any insurance will recover their money. Mm -hmm. I think in that way, uh, they are become sustainable. And there's other ways, for example, in China, uh, has always been that um, basic education and also the uh, uh, medical care support. And that is, that's going to make sure that the, if people get ill, they will not fall in the poverty. Mm -hmm. If they go to the, uh, for example, go to the schools, they will get subsidies. So uh, through the social support and the economic uh, uh, measures, I think uh, in the future the poverty reduction level can be uh, retained or sustained. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one question everybody tend to ask is can China's experience be copied or be of help to other regions that are also plagued by poverty, for instance Africa, for instance South Asia, for instance some parts in Europe where you still have poverty. Michele, your answer? In, in, in Europe, in fact, the poverty rate is going up because the economy is in danger. And so actually we have situations where in, even in developed countries, the number of poor people is going up. So mm -hmm. it's completely uh, unusual. Uh, the experience of China copied into or used into other countries is more difficult for the reason we said before, because China can manage centrally. Uh, in the West, uh, we have another tendency, instead of letting the government uh, do this, we have uh, a non-government organization, NGOs, mm -hmm. take care of this uh, uh, part of uh, the population. The problem is that uh, NGOs are relatively small organizations, in, in general, I mean, they're the big ones, uh, and so they choose uh, who and when they target. Uh, and that may create unbalances, because, uh, for example, you may have an NGO targeting a certain area mm -hmm. and not the area nearby. Mm -hmm. And so you create a situation where the people living in the lucky place, they get the help from the NGO and not in the other one. Uh, we have seen, for example, in, the, in, in Africa, we have seen poverty rates being almost flat at 50% for the last 30, 40 years. Only recently have gone down from 50 to 40% for the whole of Africa. Mm. And I think this has been due to China investing in Africa. This is part of the question that we are asking. And the model that China can actually do an export is the infrastructure development, urbanization based development. Mm -hmm. So not just uh, making poor people richer, but also getting some of the people from the rural areas to the, the urban areas and upgrade the income to three times like it's yeah. in China. Yeah. And so that's an easy way. You take them out, you, you do a geographical migration and that helps. But infrastructure and urbanization must come first. Uh, Professor Xia, your take on the question? <coughs> I think <coughs> Chinese uh, success in the 
positive reduction or in general in the industrialization has a great implication to those uh, uh, developing countries. Uh, Nobel Prize winner uh, Professor Ahmad Yassin used to say in Peking University uh, I think two years ago that if without China's success uh, uh, India wouldn't reform. So China's success basically is uh, industrialization. It's, it's a successful industrialization in the past uh, 40 years. And uh, this experience would uh, greatly encourage uh, countries like India, like African countries, Latin American countries. They can, uh, these, uh, those uh, less developed countries can still make some success in economic uh, uh, growth, in industrialization, in the poverty elevation. Mm -hmm. I think we should, and the uh, people in China and other countries should uh, study ex the experience and the examine, uh, and the dis disseminate it to the other countries and would uh, uh, bring the poverty level down in the other countries. Mm -hmm. Mr. Moore, um, just now Michele brought up the concept of uh, NGOs on the city level in Zhangye. Uh, how is the government coordinating the role between government agencies and uh, social uh, entities such as NGOs? <coughs> Can NGOs in China play the role that Michele talked about in Europe? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Just uh, you see the NGO, I think uh, is a typical Western world. But in our country, the NGO is very difficult to define uh, uh, which organization is the NGO. We just said uh, maybe social organization. Uh, some uh, social organization just uh, yeah, are supported by the government. And some social organization uh, maybe they can do their uh, work uh, independently. But uh, in the field of uh, target uh, poverty elevation, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, uh, just uh, we have some uh, NGO maybe in some degree, just like uh, some enterprise enterprise or some the rural cooperative or some the maybe the uh, social charitable organization yeah and we just ask uh, some enterprise uh, to recruit the some the people in the poor family and uh, so they they can get the job so they can afford and uh, their family so this is uh, one way another way maybe there are many the public uh, charitable organization and also they can establish and uh, some uh, mutual assisting system mm -hmm. in the rural area and uh, so they can uh, send uh, many of the useful material to the poor family. But the primary so responsibility and the primary job is on the government yeah, 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 to yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I think in China uh, the primary work should be done by the government. Yeah, this is our characteristic. Yeah. Okay. So also I can give you some examples. Uh, we sure don't have the time for that today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to my three guests, uh, Mr. Mo Ji Hong, Deputy Secretary of Zhangye Municipal Party uh, Committee, Gansu Province, Professor Xia Qingjie from the School of Economics at Peking University, and uh, Michele Giraci, Head of China Program at the Global Policy Institute. Thank you very much for joining us today. And that is it for this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. Thank you for watching. I hope you've got the point.